say goodbye to Aunt Jemima. Aunt Jemima will no longer be Aunt Jemima. It will be the same product, just new name, new picture. Uh, because Quaker, the company that owns Aunt Jemima, is it Quaker Oats? I'm not sure. It might just be Quaker now. Um, has finally decided that it is uh, racially insensitive to portray Aunt Jemima um, after 130 years. Do I agree with this? 100%. Do I think that it probably could have happened a while ago? Yeah, but you know, right now, catalyst for change. Lots of things are happen happening, moving and shaking, shaking up the world. Um, my first question was, is Mrs. Buttersworth next? Probably. What about um, Uncle Ben's rice? That's got to that's got to go too. I feel like now would be the best time, um, you know, no better time than the present to change the name of that um, football team in Washington D.C. and that Cleveland Indians hat with the little Indian guy on it. Uh, that's going to be a collectible. It's going to be an antique. Before you know it, because uh, they ain't gonna be wearing those hats no more. Trust me. Um, See, so yeah, I think that this is, it's good, man. Um, you start to really think about like the products and how brands are portrayed and the imaging on products and like the names of teams. Um, I mean, I feel like like in five years it is going to be a completely different world that we're living in. We can hope. Hopefully it takes less than five years, but I mean, there's been hundreds and hundreds of years of systemic racism and, um, you know, injustice in our country. I mean, this whole, we, we started with a bunch of injustice just by taking the land from the Native Americans. I mean, we've just all, let's face it, like, as Americans, as white Americans, we've always just been pretty shitty people. There's nothing that I personally can do about that um, other than try to not be a shitty person. So, um, and you know, obviously like support, do what I can, say what I can, show support, take action. If I had more money, I would be a, a much more charitable person, but unfortunately I am not good at selling insurance. So that's, you know, but I do what I can. So. Yeah, I've been watching, uh, well, I watched the first two parts, first episode, part one and two of Lance last night. I know I'm like a couple weeks behind on this, but, um, you know, just to segue seamlessly into a, a lighter topic. But uh, actually, no, I could have segued very uh, successfully there by talking, because I was just talking about how we're all assholes, uh, white Americans. Uh we're, we're not like on the right side of history on a lot of stuff. When they look back at like the good old US of A, like hundreds of years from now, they're gonna be like, Jesus, that country was a cluster F, dude. And I've been trying to, uh, you know, refrain from swearing. But anyway, back to how I could have se se segued into Lance Armstrong. Um, he's an asshole, man. I didn't really realize that uh, until, I mean, I always, dude, I followed Lance Armstrong and I, I heard the stories and I saw the reports back in the day of when he was suing people and ruining people's lives uh, because they're accusing him of using steroids and I'm like yeah that guy he's like a bulldog dude um, and then obviously he comes out and says he was using steroids and um, yeah it's just so I got the sense that he's an asshole but just watching him operate watching him talk in, in the first, you know, hour and 45 minutes of Lance, like, you know, that story they told right off the bat, I understand, like, why they, I, I do understand why they tell that story, why they allowed to tell him the story about how he just, um, you know, some people came up to him and they were like, F you, F you, and they're all yelling at him, and, and he, like, tells the guy to, like, buy him dinner and say it's, you know, from Lance, like, I understand why they told that story, because that seems like, um, that little episode, that little story, it's just a microcosm of who Lance is. Like, he just wants to be better than everybody. And he will, you know, go to whatever lengths it takes to be better than everyone and not feel bad about it, not think twice about it. 
I don't know. I just, you know, it's, just, it's up in the air. I just remember watching the Tour de France, like, back in the day. First time I ever cared about cycling. I don't care about cycling now. I never will care about cycling again, I'm, I'm sure. But Lance made me care about cycling. And I loved that. And if you look at Lance Armstrong, like, he is, I mean, he doesn't seem like a bully and an asshole. But that's who he is. He's a bully and he's an asshole. I think that story, I mean, teenagers, they can be, I was a, a lot different as a teen in many ways than I am today, uh, but that story about him uh, at the triathlon in like the Dominican Republic or something and screwing up the scooter and not really caring about it and then like basically just like kicking his coach to the side because he's better than him and I feel like there's a lot to that. Um, cause I think, I mean, he was 18 or 19 or something at the time, maybe 20. Um, and I mean, I don't know. I feel like they are doing a pretty good job. It's much different than, uh, the Jordan documentary. It is much different because, uh, I mean, Jordan, they showed Jordan being an asshole, but, um, they kind of backed that up with a lot of facts about why he was an asshole. And they gave Jordan all sorts of time to explain like why he was an asshole and we applauded him for that, I feel like. But with Lance, no, one, no one's applauding Lance. And I think it's so much easier just to like hate the guy, but realize that you loved what he did at the time. That's just where I'm at now. I don't know, maybe I'll talk more about it um, when I finish it, so. It's first day back at the office today. It's pretty depressing. I almost rage quit my job, honestly. I couldn't figure out how to hook up the computer correctly. Something's going on with my computer. Uh, none of that matters because I, I, I didn't figure it out. I figured out like a workaround. So it's like, okay, I don't have to be up there on my laptop. But um, you know, using the mouse and the keyboard is just like a different dimension of using a, a, a computer. Like it's okay on a laptop to like dink around with like the laptop stuff and the scrolly thing and the click and whatever. Like for a little while, but as soon as you gotta actually do some real work, you need a damn mouse, wireless preferably, and a keyboard. And until today, I really thought that I needed two screens to do my job, and I figured out today I can just do it on one big screen. Um, it's, it is pretty annoying though. I had like, I was experiencing that, like when someone like loses a limb, and they like think it's there and they think it's moving and stuff like I've heard psychologically that's what happens that's what was happening to me with the screen like I kept trying to move things over and I would look over and I'm like no nah. it was like jarring there's not another screen there it's just my stupid phone that I'm forced to use and I can't use my headset anymore because my computer's all screwed up anyway I'm thankful to have a job I talked a lot about a lot of stuff today I didn't really expect to talk about anything today um, other than the Aunt Jemima thing. Um, but yeah, to, to wrap it up, back to that, I'm glad that shit's happening, man. And I know that I said that I'm going to try to stop swearing. I'm going to try to stop using the F word, maybe. I don't know. I just want these videos to be kid-friendly. And eventually, like when I have like 2 million, 100,000, billion subscribers, I want them all to be like monetized. Like This is my retirement plan, people. This is what it looks like. This is how I'm preparing for retirement. This is it. This is my life. Here's my take. Um, Lance. Lance Armstrong. Asshole. That's not a very hot take, but it's a take. Yeah, is it? Yeah, it's technically a take. Take that.